Hey guys, John here and welcome back to 100 Sound Design Tips. This is going to be episode four and today we're talking about the contour of a sound. So this has to deal with A, D, S, and R, which I'm sure you've heard those terms, but those are attack, decay, sustain, and release. And sometimes we have hold, which you can see down here in Avenger, we do have that and we're going to discuss this in just a little bit here. So when we think of the contour of a sound, what exactly are we talking about? So if we hit a guitar string really quick, maybe it might be an instantaneous sound and then it maybe fades away really quickly or if we have maybe a strum it's still an instantaneous sound but it might fade away a little bit or for example if we hear a violin or a cello or something like that maybe it's kind of slowly fades in a little bit it kind of decays down a little bit and then it releases and it fades out kind of slowly so these kind of things are extremely important if we're trying to mimic or recreate a sound in the real world or we're going just for a synthesized sound that has these type of characteristics so these words can be somewhat confusing attack right what are we attacking i don't, I don't know um what's decaying sustaining what's releasing so if you're just kind of getting into this these words are kind of strangely chosen in my opinion an easy way to understand this would be attack is just basically fading in right release at the other end is just fading out i suppose sustain is somewhat appropriate decay kind of as well so let's kind of go into this so when we look at this default patch let's go and initialize this one more time and we're going to have maybe something somewhat pleasant to listen to maybe some saw waves like that i hit a note it's instantly there if i hold it it's the same volume the entire time and when i let it go it's instantly gone so let's say we want to fade in the sound we don't want this sound to initially be as loud as it possibly can be the second i hit a note so in that case, we can just increase this here. And this visual is very helpful. So once we hit a note, we have a little fade. And if we do something really drastic, we can see it slowly fades in. So this is going to be our attack. The other end, the release is going to be the fade out. So let's bring this attack all the way back down. So it's instant when we hit it. And when we let it go, we're going to have that fade out. So we can hear that slowly go away there. Now, those two are pretty self-explanatory. Now, decay is a little bit different, and it kind of also has to work with sustain. So when we're holding down this note, right, the note is being sustained, and at what level is that going to be in? Sustain is the only knob here that really has to deal with a certain value as opposed to time. So when we bring this down here, we can see that this is moving downwards, and this is going to be the volume at which it sustains that it holds that volume while we're holding down a key. So let's press another note here. This volume will stay here the entire time. If we brought it down something kind of low here, let's bring this release down. It's going to hang out here pretty quiet. Let's bring it almost all the way down so we can barely hear it. It's going to hang out there the whole time all the way at the top again it's going to be at its full maximum volume the entire time so now this is where decay comes in so let's say we have our sustain maybe halfway right so our initial sound is going to be at this very top spot and then the decay is going to determine how long it's going to take from getting at this very maximum volume to the sustain point how long is that transition from the top to that sustain point and we can see this happening here in the synth so this decay let's press a note here this distance right there so let's maybe extend this here a little bit longer and bring down our sustain so now it's going to travel this whole distance right there which it takes a little while and then it finally reaches sustain and it's going to hold here as long as we hold this note and that's basically going to be it as we had a release all the way back down. So that's going to be the basics of it. So attack is going to be how long it takes to fade into its maximum volume. Release at the other end is basically the opposite of that. Once we let go of that note, how long is this going to ring out or fade out for? And then sustain, what level is it going to sustain out once we're holding down our notes? And then again, decay is how long it takes from this very peak point until it hits that sustain. So that's kind of the easy way to grasp it. And depending on what synthesizer you have, there's going to be different types of curves. So here in Avenger, let's say we have a longer attack. Now, this here is a linear curve, right? It's just a straight line. However, if we right click, we can go here. So it's kind of a concave or convex curve. And these can drastically change how things are going to sound. 
For example, if I'm working on a pad, I don't like a curve like that. I kind of like it a little bit past the linear phase. So it kind of bumps up a little bit and then it starts hitting things there. On the release side, the opposite I kind of like as well. So I can kind of bring it down. So it kind of scoops down a little bit. That sounds a little bit more natural to my ears. And we can do the same thing with decay. We can have all these different types of curves and we can adjust the contour of that sound, which is very, very important. So now we talked about hold. So let's reinitialize this one more time. And again, let's bring in some unison like that. Now we have hold, and this is between the attack knob and the decay knob. So if we have our attack somewhat kind of long like that, let's bring our sustain down so we can kind of see this shape going on. Now we have this kind of shape going. Let's take a listen. Here it sustains and we release and it goes away. Now hold is going to split where the attack ends and the decay begins. So here we can have a little bit more time going through this. So if we hit the note now, there's that little bit of time once the attack is done at its, at its peak volume, and then we're going to wait a little bit of time. It's going to hold at that spot. And then once that time is done, then we enter that decay phase. Now, on most synthesizers, I would imagine, are going to have some type of ADSR envelope, right? The attack, decay, sustain, and release. Not all of them have hold. It's a very cool feature, but not everyone has hold. If yours doesn't have it, that's fine. You can still get a lot of mileage on it, um, but don't think you absolutely need to have hold to get some kind of patch done. Now, these are kind of predetermined knobs here that work for most cases. Now, there's going to be times, for example, where maybe you want a custom shape here and different synthesizers might offer this, they might not. But here in Avenger, we have something called a mod envelope. So here we can kind of define exactly what we want. So maybe this is going to be our attack phase. Maybe we can hold here for a little bit like we just talked about. We can maybe make another point and maybe sustain or decay right down here. And then maybe we can sustain for a little while, make some room here, and maybe we're sustaining here and then we have another release. But hey, maybe we'll, we want to go back upwards and we'll make another point here and kind of go through that. Now, these are called either modulation envelopes, MSEGs, that sort of thing. So this might be for a later video once we kind of get the concept of this wrapped around because I don't want to get too complex here, but just know that every sound out there has some type of contour, how long it takes to fade in, how long it takes to decay if it has to has a sustain level, and also how long it fades away once you stop playing it. And start noticing this when you start playing an instrument or listening to music, or if there's a guitar, does it ring out for a while? Does it go away really quickly? Does the bass ring out for a while? Um, if it, if they play a note, how long does that really sustain for? Which is a point why there are sustained pedals because you want to keep that tone for a while. You don't want it just to just be gone so quickly. In that case, for example, if we had something like the sustain all the way down and we play some notes, it doesn't matter if I hold it, it's just going to instantly go away because it has no level. The level is zero where it sustains at. So really, we hit the attack and it just goes away from the decay. And this can be a really cool parameter as well if we're using something like an ARP here, if we're playing with a lot of notes. We have something really quick like that. And once you start getting more familiar with these kind of things too, you're going to start listening to different songs or ARPs or whatever it is. You can kind of almost visualize that timing of how quick something maybe fades in, it fades out, it sustains, it releases, and so on and so forth. So whatever synth you have, try to play it with the ADSR and try to mimic different types of instruments. See what a violin sounds like and try to do that same type of curve or try to do the same thing as a guitar, a bass, whatever instrument that you're thinking of, listen for that contour and try to match that with the knob that you have in your synthesizer. So hopefully that makes sense. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.